into Blackboard. Um, let's go ahead and do that now. Um, so you were given a username and password. Um, when you um, got your computer, that'll be your login for Blackboard. And it should take you to your start page. Um, and you'll notice that all of you are already enrolled in what's called this um, new certified training course. And you should actually already be enrolled in four of them. Um, just because we have so many of you, we wanted you to be able to play. Um, and so that was the, um, that was the intent. And it's blackboard.westside66.org. I would encourage you to make a bookmark of that. Does anyone not know how to make a bookmark? Blackboard.westside66.org. You should still be able to access Blackboard. Blackboard is not a blocked site through iPrison. It's just an automatic. Um, it's just an automatic get through. One thing I do. A lot of you are probably using Safari as the browser, and it'll be fine for today, but. Um, it has been told to us that Chrome or Firefox looks better with Blackboard. I'm a Safari diehard, so that's why I'm using yeah. Safari. So it just kind of it just depends on what your preference is. There are some things that Blackboard and Safari butt heads with. So um, like, and I those are the kinds of quirks and like you know how every program has like its little tweaks. That's one of the ones that you'll find it and you'll be like, oh, let's try that in Firefox or Chrome, and all of a sudden it'll work. Um, but can I tell you those right off the top of my head? No, I just know them when I find them and I go, oh yeah, that's right, I have to go over here to do that. Um, so I say just use the browser that you're comfortable with and then you'll find those spots and you'll just know, oh, I've got to go over here and switch my browser and that should fix the issue. That's one of the things about Blackboard is some of those things are just a browser communication issue and if you switch your browser, it'll fix it. Is anybody not in logged into Blackboard at this time? You might have gotten a welcome screen. There's probably a little X at the top if you um, if you can close out of that. And just kind of pointing at some features. Okay, you'll notice that in these training courses, you are already logged in as a teacher. But we have um, I'm Angie Bergman, um, but we have two other. Um, we're all instructors at the high school here. Jeanette Kleppinger um, is there, and David Bulin is there. Um, I teach earth and space science here at the high school. Um, we've worked really hard to try to go as paperless as possible um, in our course. Um, and there's also an online version of earth and space science that David Bulin was instrumental in creating um, and facilitating for a while. Jeanette, do you want to tell them about yourself a little bit? I teach business classes, primarily technology at the high school as well. Um, and I also teach the online course in our department, the information technology, so our students can take a technology course purely online, so and that's, I'll show you that site a little bit. Okay, and Dave, where are you? Uh, I teach, well, this, I'm not no longer teaching aerospace science, I teach uh, chemistry, which we do a lot of uh, stuff with, a lot, we use Blackboard mostly for repository and assessments, which we'll talk about later. Um, and then in physics, I don't think, I'm new to the physics team, so I'm not sure if they use it very much, but I will be helping them use it as at least a repository or a place to put items. Yeah, um, one of the things you kind of want to be thinking about as you go through today is what, what does Blackboard, you can use it for very little or you can use it for a whole lot. It can be used for all, a ton of communication with your students and your parents. It can be used to make your class paperless. It can be used just as a place to store stuff for a kid who's sick who needs to go get that same information. So depending on your comfort level will depend on how you use it. Um, it can do as much as you want it to, or it can do as little as you want it to. So you're going to, and it's one of those things that kind of grows as you go. So, like, you might only do a little bit with it this year because you only have a little bit of time, but next year you might build on that, and the following year you build on that. And, um, and so it kind of grows with you as you go. Um, the first thing we're going to do when you're, um, you're going to need a course. Um, right now you're already logged into these training courses, and that's kind of going to be your playground today. Um, but to do anything um, on Blackboard, that requires system administration. Um, we're gonna like um, like creating a new class or enrolling your students. Um, if you're enrolling a huge batch of students, um, all of those types of deals are gonna happen on the web log. So for that, you need to make sure that you're logged into first class. Um, and you should have a conference here um, called Blackboard.
if you don't have this conference folder Blackboard, it is also located here inside this conferences folder. So somewhere on there you'll have a little icon that says conferences folder. It should also be located there. So if it doesn't automatically appear on your desktop for first class, it's in that conferences folder and you should be able to just drag it out of there and drop it onto your desktop there. So when you go into the Blackboard um, conference folder, you know, anything that, um, that Matt uh, yeah, do, do you guys, you, Matt was introduced before. So Robin Davis used to have Matt's job, and then Lynn Sweedy had it, and now you'll see Matt Lee's name in there. Anytime they have anything to tell us about problems, issues, updates, um, if you have a question that might apply to all users, this is where it would go is on this conference page. But what you're going to mainly use this for is the Blackboard log. Um, and so, um, like right now, uh, Lynn, or, yeah, Lynn has taken care of my um, of deleting all my old students, um, but she um, has not yet enrolled all my students. Um, so one of the things um, I'm going to do is create a, um, a request to her. Now you got to remember our tech team is very small for the number of computers that we have in our district. It's, it's, it's very small. So um, this is one place they know to go look and then if you send them an email, good luck um, because they're going to get so many emails in a day. So this is the, um, this is the first place um, that you would go to do a, a Blackboard request. And so you can see here that there's a whole lot of requests. Um, enroll, whole class, and delete. Um, keep students previously enrolled. So if you have um, a bunch of students that were added, um, create a new empty course. So this is probably going to be the first one that you guys, if you think, yeah, I'm going to use Blackboard a lot, um, go ahead and create a new empty course. Um, and then you can, um, you can go ahead and do your Blackboard request um, right now if you would like. Um, so what I need to get done today is actually I need to um, enroll new students. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and put in my name. Um, if you are a team, on a team, make sure that you are um, working with the members of your team so that four of you do the same request. Um, my Blackboard course name is Earth Space Science. Um, and uh, request details, um, I can say old previous students already deleted, enroll students for this semester. Um, I am a planner, so I would actually already put the Blackboard request in last spring, so I'm sure that this is already on um, Lynn's, uh, uh, Lynn's radar, so I don't have to worry about her doing this. This is probably a moot request as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Um, so now I'm on this screen and I can actually view the current queue. Um, and so I have, um, I have put in one um, from earlier today and I actually have another one to add to that. Um, but you can see how, where you fall in line. How far down the list am I and how long is that request going to take? They're pretty quick about going through that. Um, does anyone have any questions? Can I say one thing real quick? Sure. When she said it's small, it's me. Um, so if you're making the request, I would try to get to them and, you know, Lynn and Eric will help me out too, but it's basically me that are putting it all in. So if it's like the day before class, I will try to get to it, but I can't guarantee that it's going to get done like within the hour. So if you're waiting until like 8 a.m. and you need it at 9 a.m., that's probably, you know, Give them lead time. The best, yeah. Uh, the other thing is, as you're entering the requests in, please put just one request at a time. So if you teach four classes that you want to enroll, put four different requests in there. You know, you can have delete all users and enroll new users. That's one request, but don't say for this course, this course, and this course. So just one at a time in there. And I will, in the email I send you later today, I'll give you my phone number. So if an emergency does come up and you're like, oh crap, it's the first day of school, my syllabus is on Blackboard, I forgot to enroll my kids, you can call me. And emergency stuff, you know, I'll drop what I'm doing and make sure I get it put in so you can actually teach your classes. But just for like this routine, like setup stuff, please try to talk with your teams first, make sure you don't duplicate things, but one at a time. And some lead time will be preferred. All right, so there's an, I, so I just added another one because I found two users that were teachers in my class that no longer were with the district, so I added those to the queue that, you know, Matt can look at that and go, oh, those don't have to be handled right now. 
but we pay per user, so that's okay. one of some of those nice things. Does anybody have any questions about the Blackboard log, how you access that? Okay, fabulous. Um, and stuff like that will come up again, so if you forget, I know like my first couple times doing the web log, I had to go ask other people. So with an empty yeah, board, board, so it's not that big of a deal if you ask. Yeah. No. Yeah, you can just say thank you if you want. I have to just type this in. Yeah, so that's always, that access is through the board. Um, if you're teaching more than one section, you can use one Blackboard. If you want them to have different, uh, let's say I have two, so like for me, I teach Earth Space Science, I have six sections, they all use the same Blackboard site. But if I have two different classes, like if I teach Earth Space and Earth Space Online, my online class looks a lot different from my classroom class, so I have two separate courses, so that would be a separate Blackboard request. Good question. Other questions? Okay, so now one of the things you'll notice, um, if you can go ahead and tap back over or get back over to your Blackboard page, you'll notice on these training co training courses, um, Jeanette Kleppinger and David Bulin are not listed on that class list. So next what we're going to go into is enroll users. So what I'd like to do is split the classroom into quarters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten, there's about ten of you, so let's say like, you chunk of three, you'll go into the first one. You chunk of three, you go into the second one, two. Um, course two or course one. You guys can take three, and we should have one empty one. Um, but what we're going to do is, uh, so go ahead and click on one of those. And then what I'm going to have you guys do is, um, of you three um, that are in the one course, decide who's going to enroll David Bulin and who's going to enroll Jeanette Kleppinger. Okay, same thing with you three, same thing with you three. Um, just, just chat about, I'll do David, I'll do Jeanette, and then um, if somebody's left out of each group, one of you can go into the other course. So just kind of figure it out, it doesn't matter. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the training course, and I've already played around in here a bit to give you guys um, an idea of what a Blackboard course can do and what it should look like. This is a banner. We'll teach you how to change that banner and make a banner. Um, these are announcements. We'll also go through announcements on that. Um, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add Jeanette and, um, and So real quick, David. again, you wanted want one group to go into course number one. Yeah. Course so one. over there, you guys course one, you guys in the middle course two, you guys back there course three. And there's two of them actually that are listed without a number. Um, so there's four, there's two of them listed as just NCS training course. So if you want to, oh, there's one that's Westside Middle School training course. So if someone wants to take the middle school one, that would be cool. So it doesn't matter to me which one you're in. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do, um, and you'll notice I put some buttons, we'll talk about that too. What we're going to do first is we're going to go over here to users and groups. Oh, Mr. Bulin. Oh, take time. We're still getting there? No, we're fine. Oh. Okay. And we are going to um, then go over to where it says users. So I'm down here in what's called the control panel. Okay, so this is where, this is the stuff kids can't see. Um, this is the stuff only instructors can see. Um, so I know somebody mentioned on the way in, oh yeah, I used this from the student side. My college used this. So you didn't have this control panel. So this is kind of your playground. Um, and we're going to go right here to where it says users and groups. And you'll notice when you click on the name or on the arrow, it'll open that up. And what we're going to play with today is users. Okay. And what we notice is that David Bulin and Jeanette Kleppinger are not in here. So we are going to add, um, notice it says find users to enroll. Um, usernames, usually not very useful for us because their usernames for our students are their power school numbers. You don't know that. And that's not a good idea for you to know that. Um, because that we want to keep secure just like you want to keep your usernames and passwords secure. We want that for our students too. Um, so most often you will use the last name and then go ahead and type in either Kleppinger or the first part of it um, or Bulin. Well, I would show that find users to enroll, click on that. Because okay. that's where if you have the number, 
because that'll just search. This is where you'll actually enroll, and you can click on the browse. Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot. So we really click on the find browse. users to enroll. Okay, go ahead. And it'll back. open up because otherwise it'll search like you yeah, have 200 kids. It'll search for that one kid. So find users to enroll. I forgot that button. That was my bad. Find users to enroll, and you're not going to know the username. It's a pain in the butukas. You could have the kid give it to you. Uh, I just don't like to go there. Now if I put in the last name, and I type in Mr. Bulin's name, and push go. Oh, that didn't work. Are you already in this one? Somebody beat me to it. That's why I wanted you guys to divide and conquer. Oh look, someone successfully added Mr. Bulin. Thank you. And are you on there? I think we might be already in all of them, I guess. So you can do the other names like that. No, Kleppinger is not in this one. Okay. Um, I'm in, I think, four. Kleppinger needs to go into four. So you want to go. Look at the D. Yeah. Once you hide, you can close the text. Okay. Well, I'm trying to verify it. Okay. So the username is so the student goes to see it. So it's your last name? Sometimes it's fine. Maybe class I'm in. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right, and notice how it gave me her username and put that in there, and now I have to submit. That's one of the, tw the things about Blackboard. It's kind of, they're kind of click-tastic. Now you notice when Terry Donahoe goes in here, we're all listed as teachers, but now she's listed as a student. I don't necessarily want her in there as a student. You can change that role that that, stu that person is in. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that arrow that's right next to her name, and notice now it gives me this option. I can change her availability, if this student is um, like on an online class and they're not keeping up and I want them to come in to see me but I can't get them to come see me, this is a tool I can use. I can just take this class away from her and then she'll come in and go, hey, Miss Bergman, I can't get into that class anymore. I know because you weren't coming in to see me. We need to do some work together. Um, and so that's one of the tools you can use is to change their availability. Um, or let's say you have a student teacher come in and you want the student teacher to have um, some usage in Blackboard. You can change their role. And so you have everything from guest lecturer, teacher, teaching assistant, class builder, grader, guest, student teacher, whatever. Um, and different roles have different abilities of what they can do and what they can change. Um, and I want um, her to be able to do everything. And so I'm going to go ahead and change that role and now I can submit. And now, lo and behold, Terry has access to everything in this practice course. Well, okay. Back out. What? We'll have to back out. Come back in. You might just have to refresh. Blackboard's pretty cool about being able to just refresh. So now, if you were one of those ones who enrolled David Bulin, someone could change, or Jeanette Kleppinger, if you could change their role to teacher, that would be helpful to us. Uh, what Angie was also talking about is blocking the student. You don't have to, if you delete a student, if you're like, I, don't, oh, I need attention, like uh, Angie was saying, if you delete them, it deletes any of their progress that they've had. So you, you don't want to delete them unless they're not your student anymore. But under that same thing, under role, it'll say, um, so like if you go to anybody's. Um, and you can go to change users availability in the class. That's the other one. What that does is that just blocks it so that they don't see it. When they log in, all their classes are listed except for yours. And we just found it helpful in our online class, really, because, I mean, if you blocked it from our regular class, you're not going to see. Uh, they may not care. Oh, well, I guess I can't do my homework. Right. But in the online class, that's their only contact with you, so. All right, questions about changing rules or adding students. Um, you will um, add students if you have a drop app. So if your student comes into your classroom late, you don't want to contact Matt with that because he's got bigger fish to fry. If it's just one, two, three, four, five students, you take care of this yourself, and you do that here, okay? Um, if you have 100 students in your class and it's the beginning of the semester, don't try to do that yourself because that's where he has tools where he can upload all 100 of those all at once, okay? So during that drop-add period for us uh, high school and middle school teachers, it makes you a little crazy, 
and you'll have to remind your students, let me know if you don't have Blackboard access um, so that they will speak up and, and tell you what they need. Um, but um, don't expect Matt to handle all of the teachers one or two at a time. Try to you'll, take care of as much You'll as hear as from some students that like drop your class and you're, they're getting announcements. Yeah, they're like, I'm not in this class anymore. They're like, I don't care what homework is. <laughs> you're like, oh yeah, right. So then yeah. you just delete them real quick and it's a lot easier. Yep. Okay. Or you punish them by, because they drop your class and just make them show because you will still work. All right, questions on enrolling users or changing lives? Okay. Anything to add, you guys? Did anybody change? Uh, but I guess there's one other thing, I, and I already mentioned that I think there are a couple people. If you, if when you log in, it lists your classes, and the classes that you're teaching um, are not listed there. So if you're in English, math, social studies, whatever class, and it's not listed there, you just may not be uh, set up as a instructor in that course. So when you meet with your teams or your mentors, um, talk to them about that, and they'll just make sure that the right people get you enrolled as a. Well, and that's where this course. class list is handy because notice it puts the ones that I teach first. So I'm on the biology team, I'm on the earth space team, I'm on this training course team, I'm on natural science team, I have my club peer tutors. This is another place you can use it for clubs. So if you're running a club, it's a really handy way to get stuff out to your club members if everybody can't come to a meeting. Um, there's my online course, but then it lists my student classes. So um, the district technology support, power teacher, blackboard help. Um, all of those should be on your on your teacher side. So if for some reason your teammates add you on to the blackboard. So like if I have a new teacher on my team, I can add them in, but then I have to remember to switch the role. If they forgot to do that, you'll be under the student list. Um, so uh, I can say, hey, I'm on there as a student. Can you switch me over? And then they can help you get switched over. So. All right. Um, the other thing you probably are going to want to do at some point is change your password. Um, and you'll notice that I just made these as little, oops, that's the wrong class. Can you tell which one I'm used to clicking on? Another quick way to get to your class list without having to reload that page is up here in this little arrow by my name. So now I know I can, oh, I'll just go over here to this one. <laughs> and that's one way to get there quickly. Um, so um, passwords, um, down and dirty. You have your name up there in the upper right hand corner and it defaults to classes view. Okay, so when I click that arrow, it automatically goes to classes view. But if you notice way down here at the bottom, there's this little settings button. If you click on that settings button, I can change all sorts of stuff. The text size the Blackboard defaults to, whether it's high contrast. So if you have a kiddo who needs high contrast as visual, you might already have that set on the computer, but you can also change it through Blackboard. Personal information. Um, that's where you are going to change your password if you ever need to. If you don't want it to be your power school password that it defaults to, um, this is where you change it. Um, notification settings, this one's a handy dandy one. I don't like to get notifications on Blackboard. They don't always work. Um, and so I have a lot of them turned off. <laughs> um, so you can also change your notification settings in there um, so that you... Uh, so that you can personalize Blackboard to make it be what you want to do. Um, questions on changing your password or how to get there? Now, real quick, too, on the side note, we're, we're showing a lot of stuff to you, but don't feel like you have to memorize anything. We're just showing you what you can do with Blackboard. So we're always available here at the building. There's a lot of resources. If you do need to do something or want to do something, uh, you can contact us for more specific stuff later on. Can but I, this you, were, you were talking about um, like other teachers who teach the same class. Mm -hmm. So you all have the same Blackboard, or my Blackboard is going to look different than their Blackboard? Um, well, like here, okay, so Mr. Bulin and I um, are both on the Earth Space Science team. Okay. He taught this with me. When he goes in here, it looks exactly the same. He can see everything that I can see. Um, and he can change anything. So like, let's say it's, a, you know, a 9.30 on a snow day, and I decide, I'm stuck at home, my streets closed, I can't get to school today, and he's like, oh, I'm already here. Okay, can you go ahead, you know, I left my computer there for some reason last night, can you go ahead and send out an announcement through Blackboard to the kids, and here's what I want to say. He can send it out for the whole entire team, so you can get good consistency. If you want your own separate page, you can, but here at the high school, we do a lot of team teaching, so we usually have the same class. 
same Blackboard course. So I was thinking like your small group might have something a little different than somebody else's small group. Ah, what's cool about that is under that um, control panel where we had users and groups, um, you can create groups within here, so you can make um, you can make groupings where different sections can see different things. So out of that entire core class list, I can group my section ones together. I can group my section twos together. I can group my section threes together. So if that section one all of a sudden had one discussion question that we wanted to address, I could create a discussion board just for that. Right. So you so can do that within there if you're teaching a high school or middle school type of course. And Angie and I could each, we, we didn't do it, but we could have had our own folder with stuff to put in it that only our classes could have seen. Okay. And, do it that way. and that's what we do. We have six teachers on our intro tech team. It's so rather than doing groups, because we have 400 people enrolled in that course, we each have our own tab off to the left where students can access specific information. Most of the time it's in general all the same, but if you do have those specific things that you're talking about, each have our own okay. private tab, I guess. So, and then so. do you just make that tab not only available to certain groups? Because you're, you're talking tabs here, right? Right. We, they're available to everybody. But the kids, no, they don't have. I don't have to check Miss Cleppinger. They don't care. Right. Oh, yeah. Enough to do. Right. I mean, to be honest, so that's one way we do it with the four hundred students. Okay. Okay. Questions about um, about that uh, changing of the password. A personal information piece. Um, before we do the next one, it's announcements, and, uh, and you can show them how to do an announcement. Uh, one thing about the announcements on Blackboard is a lot of times students are not going to read it. Um, and a lot of it's just because they're bombarded with emails and stuff. Um, and this kind of goes back to what was said uh, down uh, in the little theater uh, at, and Matt knows this because he was at, at not NSPA, you know what I'm talking about, NIDA. And it was, it was really important for me. A lot of my kids wouldn't look at Blackboard announcements. And so a lot of it's about going to their technology <coughs> using Twitter. I think Matt uses Twitter, don't you? Or Twitter and Remind 101. OK. So other, other stuff that kids are already on that they already have access to. Um, and so those are some things if you do send out a lot of announcements. Um, to the, uh, with the emails and stuff, if your students are getting like 15 emails a day from you on different things, they're, they're going to not read them. I was just talking about how I got 15 emails from one teacher this summer, and I have like 14 that I still have to read because it's just you know you, you get desensitized from it. So be careful when you're sending out announcements in an online class. Obviously, the kids have to get those kinds of stuff like what we had, but in a regular class, uh, be cautious about how many announcements you send out um, in, in the mode. And just like when we can change notifications, whether or not we can see them, students can change notifications on Blackboard as well. And a lot of times they will do the same thing. I'm going to turn off this notification because I don't want to hear every time every class changes something on Blackboard. Because you might be changing just a document. I'm going to pull this document down because there's a typo and I'm going to repost it. It'll send them a notification. So they might turn those notifications off. Um, but we'll talk here about how you can make sure that they get it via email. and. It, you know, of those students who are going to ignore emails, they're either on email or they're not. And at the high school, at least, I'm not sure about the middle school, but I'm sure it's much the same, they're on their chat with their friends all the time. That's the first thing they want to do when they get to your class. Pop up that laptop, log on to first class, see who emailed them, what did so-and-so say. Because um, if they haven't texted, has time to text them in the hallway, you better bet they're checking their email when they get to class. Um, and so hopefully those students who need that information are going to go ahead and check it. But you will have those students who are like, I don't check class at all ever <laughs> you know so it's just meeting that need of all those learners that same type of issue that you're going to have with that you're going to have with blackboard um okay so announcements are are pretty easy um uh one thing to keep in mind if you're ever having troubles like how come all my buttons aren't working always check your edit mode on and off if you turn your edit mode off you're seeing it the way a student would see it um, and so this is what it looks like if a student is looking at my announcement page. Um, but if I turn that edit mode back on, um, I can see everything that a teacher is supposed to see, which is mainly on this one, create an announcement. And so these are really easy. You just create your announcement, click that button, and it says, well, what do you want to call it? I'm going to call it introduction. And please create 
announcement. In the class you are playing. While you're okay. typing that, the plus side, I don't want to give you the downside of all the answers. The plus side is even if it, if it goes to the kids and they delete the email, it's on Blackboard all the time. So whether it's a link to something, um, when they log into Blackboard, they'll see that announcement, the, the whole list for the whole semester. So if it's something that's important, you can leave it up there and it'll always be available. And you have all the formatting tools that you would in any like Word document. Um, my favorite is this one, spell checker, um, and it gives you a lovely little um, pop-up window so that you can tell if you have a typo because your students will tell you. Um, and then you can choose date restrictions. So do I want it to display after today at 11.59 p.m. I want it to go down at, what time is this one over? At 3.25 p.m. And you notice I just typed it in. Um, and here is one that I can email. Send a copy of this announcement immediately. So what's going to happen is I'm going to ping you all right now. And if I want them to go to a specific spot in the class, I can put a class link. Um, so I can browse that. And what will happen is when they go to go to this class, um, you will see them, uh, you will see, they will see this spot immediately when they click that link in Blackboard only. Not if you try to, if you try to click it in first class, it will not go, it will be a dead link. But if you try to click it in Blackboard, it will take you to the spot you want that to happen. And so, oh, it's in the future, oops. What's today, today's date? Oh, 11.59. I didn't look at that. There we go. Time entered is not valid. Let's do... I'll do it your way, Blackboard. There we go. Oh, I forgot to check the email. Darn it, now you didn't get pinged. Oh, well. Um, but what you'll hear is across the computers will go, bing, 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 bing. That's another way you know if your kid's on email. Okay? Um, and notice this line, new announcements appear below this line. Let's say I always want this one to be on top. What's cool about this line, if you go over to the edge, I can set the order of anything. So my new announcements can go down farther there. I can put this here. Now I know any new announcements are going to appear right here, and this one's always going to stay at the top. Um, so you can put this line wherever you want it on your page. So if you have one you want to be permanent, it can go at the top and all your new ones will just keep stacking up. And it's like layering on a piece of paper, the newest one ends up on top. Alright, so if you have not made an announcement, go ahead and do that so you can play with that. Oh, really? We got hurry then. Alright, questions on making an announcement. files in content areas. Okay. Um, to make sure that you guys have, I'm going to delete this link. Hopefully no one's paying, playing in there because I just deleted it. <laughs> okay. Um, the final thing we're going to talk about is adding files and adding content areas. These are considered content areas. So if you were to click on each of these, um, you'll see where I can, um, I put like a little down and dirty how-to in there. 